coffee that can make you lose weight? It sounds too good to be true, doesn't it? Well, that's because it is, but Valentis is pitching it all the same. They sell slim roast Brazilian roast coffee, which for some reason is listed as expiring over two months ago on May 31st, 2022, as of writing this. But hey, if you buy this potentially expired product, you're going to be able to manage your weight with exciting results. It doesn't matter if you failed to lose weight in the past, Valentis claims you can do it this time by crushing your cravings. Their coffee will literally nourish and reset your brain receptors in charge of memory, alertness, and feeling full. You name it and this coffee can do it basically. So where can you buy this irresistible coffee? On Valentis.com, of course. They've got other products too, like supplements and skincare that can reverse time, but you're not here for that. You're looking for that sweet expired miracle coffee. Unfortunately, it does cost $75 for just 24 servings or about $3 per cup. Miracles aren't cheap. But hey, if you were only a distributor, then you would pay $60 per container of Slim Roast. Just $60, way more reasonable. And once you do get your hands on this coffee, made with of course coffee, but also green tea powder, cocoa powder, and a few other things that I know I would pronounce horrifically, you'll get calm, productive energy, won't feel those pesky cravings, and be able to shed pounds, all while enjoying a delicious morning brew. Supposedly, there's also a chance that you might feel some reported side effects like diarrhea, chest pains, nausea, or even flashing lights in your eyes. But hey now, those side effects are just anecdotal evidence written by some strangers on the internet. They're not necessarily reputable. Oh, and that warning about Valentis from MedSafe, New Zealand Medicines and Medical Devices Safety Authority? Don't worry about that either. They're all the way in New Zealand. Just because their medical authorities are seizing stock doesn't mean that it won't work for you. Now, of course, I'm being a bit facetious here. In all seriousness, just the sheer concept of weight loss coffee is pretty suspect to me, let alone the fact that an MLM is pitching it. As expected, this means that their products aren't guaranteed to work and the ingredients are, well, questionable at times. For example, the phaseolamin within their product, Slim Roast, hasn't been deemed harmful yet. It's supposed to reduce the breakdown and absorption of carbs, but their actual effectiveness isn't really all that proven either. Garcinia camboja, another ingredient popular in weight loss products, also just isn't proven to be effective whatsoever at this time. A 2020 review of 11 short-term studies found no significant effects and several dozen cases of liver toxicity that have been reported in people taking products that contain this plant. There are other side effects that have been reported too, like headache, nausea, and diarrhea, which all sound pretty familiar. Of course, it's still not all that clear if the plant is actually dangerous as there's just not enough studies out there to come to any clear conclusions. And I know what you may be thinking, then how do we know that Valentis is dangerous? If some of their top ingredients are questionable but unproven, what is it that has led to their stock being seized? Well, that's because they also contain New Zealand Class C controlled drugs in them. So you'll certainly feel more awake drinking this coffee, but the stuff in it is banned in various parts around the world for a reason. But all the same, they stuff it into the coffee anyway. So here we are. Hello and welcome to Multi-Level Mondays. I'm the Illuminati and today we're talking about the MLM known as Valentis. We've already talked a bit about their product and believe me, we'll get into that more soon. But let's talk about the ingenious minds behind the company for just a moment, Joyce and Dave Jordan. When they created Valentis, it was meant to be a company built by distributors for distributors, a way to welcome people into the fold of network marketing after the couple stated they had some shady experiences in the past. In their 2020 interview with Business for Home, Dave, or Joyce, it's not actually clear who's talking here, stated, quote, I joined my second company only to have the owner run it out of business after I built a team of over 70,000 customers in less than two years. The final straw was in 2008 in my third venture when I walked away from a $50,000 a month check and said, enough is enough. And first of all, I love that neither of them really clarify why they walked away from a big fat check, but the general attitude here is that the Jordans were sick of being used by greedy owners to build a downline that ultimately benefited themselves. They then list how in 2014, their first year of sales made about $300,000. In 2015, it was $3 million and the following year, $30 million. I actually managed to find one of the articles they were featured in ages ago with an MLM called Weora. Back then, Dave called it different from anything else I have been involved in, in a good way. Before Weora, Dave had his own business on eBay working about 90 hours per week, making about $15,000 per month. 
With Wayora, he said, quote, I've generated a business that works 90 hours per hour in time leverage. He's trying to say that the money he used to earn in 90 hours, he can earn in one, but the way Dave words it is a bit goofy. Dave, my, my dearest pumpkin spice sweetie pie, those 90 hours aren't materializing out of thin air. They're coming from your downline. You know, the overworked yet extremely underpaid distributors that are often disillusioned into believing that they own their own business, those people. It's also worth noting that Wayora too sold health and wellness products that at one point had been accused of fraud. So even if Dave's taste isn't for me, at least he's consistent. The thing is, it sounds like the Jordans went from complaining about greedy MLMs to, you know, creating one of their own. I love how their history is this passionate story about how they wanted distributors to have freedom and treat others the way they wanna be treated. Yet the whole rest of the section is about the tens of millions that they've made. If the Jordans wanted to prove that their company really is for distributors, then they'd share how much their sellers are making. But that's just my two cents, of course. Anyway, the couple also adds in how they tossed in a skincare line into the mix, though that's so rarely what Valentis is known for. And they told this article that they also launched a detox tea, which let's be real here, are basically just laxatives. Now, the following year, BFH interviewed Hattie and her husband, Tom, who had recently achieved double diamond rank at Valentis. And according to that couple, they lost 60 pounds in two months and became walking billboards for the product. And they say walking billboards, I say walking warning signs, because if those numbers are true, they're losing weight in an extremely unhealthy way and likely not obtaining any sort of meaningful long-term weight loss. Doctors might prescribe very low calorie diets for someone with obesity if they're having a serious health issue, but otherwise aiming for about one to two pounds a week is largely considered healthy. The fact that these top sellers are promoting these unhealthy goals through Valentis is not surprising, but it is, as per usual, disappointing. Personally, I don't doubt that they use some of the same tactics to try and sell their products. That's just my opinion, and it's not like I'm following Hattie or Tom's Instagram or Facebook pages, but if they're willing to make those claims in an article online, I'm confident they've got no problem selling it to their downline. All right, so we've got a pretty general picture of who Valentis is, a weight loss coffee company with questionable ingredients and over the top claims. Not a big surprise to me, but what makes this MLM unique is that Valentis has actually gone defunct, kind of. When the Jordans boasted about how much their company steals from distributors, I mean, sorry, whoa, frog in my throat there. I meant when they were boasting about how much their company earns, they said they only made 22 million in 2017 and in 2018, just 17 million. This was a massive drop from the 32 million they earned in 2016. So I was curious where all of those sales went. What was the obstacle the Jordans say they faced? Thankfully, Botwatch, a blog that compiles information about MLMs has a fantastic and sourced timeline all about Valentis's journey. To boil it down, in May, 2017, Valentis was sued for not paying for their coffee beans from the supplier. They were counter suing because that same supplier was not actually even bothering to deliver their coffee, but selling it to one of their rivals, Vitae, Vita, I don't know, another competitor. There's a lot of strange arguing and bickering back and forth between the two, with Valentis accusing said supplier of intentionally and secretly manufacturing excess slim roast to sell at reduced rates to other companies basically just trying to undercut them and begin their own product called Lean Java Bean, which I like the name better personally. Now, apparently some of their own representatives were in on this new Lean Java Bean brand, like Double Diamond official, Louis Volpe. He, along with his friend, Jane Lee, were caught offering and selling Slim Roast in bulk quantities at less than half of the Valentis retail price, just $28. So yeah, Valentis hadn't been paying their suppliers, but then this whole weird back alley slim roast deal was going on between them and top representatives. It's pretty clear why that was happening though. But here's what I find so ironic about it all. The Jordan said that their company would be for distributors and they wanted to treat others the way they wanted to be treated. Yet the Jordans created an environment exactly like the MLMs they escaped. They ran away from a big fat paycheck, just like Volpe did because he wanted to actually, you know, run his own business. I'm not saying he didn't do anything shady here, but Valentis was likely pitched to him as a way to have independence and have his own company when that's just not how MLMs work. Is it any wonder that he went off to do exactly what he was promised in the first place? Plus it's also hilariously terrible that he could apparently sell the coffee for less than half of what Valentis charges. Now, if that doesn't say anything about how obscenely overpriced they are, I don't know what does. And this was only the beginning of their trouble in the UK. There, it's actually illegal to have a substantial entry fee for an MLM. Otherwise it starts tipping into pyramid scheme territory. These massive entry fees show that, hey, the distributor might as well be the customer when you're having them pay a ton of money for a product just to join. 
Valentis, with their 369 pound or about $500 startup fee crossed the line into substantial. And the same month the lawsuit was filed, they were also reported for being a pyramid scheme. Their executives told everyone to be careful. No more making income claims, weight loss claims, or stock photos with the words sold out or who wants some on it. Their Facebook page read, the company is stable, bulletproof, and has an incredible future, and our job is to protect it. A couple months later, there were crackdowns for being illegal. So yeah, real bulletproof stuff. Color me surprised that a weight loss coffee MLM might not carefully abide by the rules. I'm shocked, I tell you. Now, from what I've gathered, their reputation tanked because a celebrity was working for them. While you might think this might be a boon to Valentis, it really only puts more eyes on the company and forces regulators to take things just a bit more seriously. In this case, the celebrity in question was Charlotte Thompson, a Miss England finalist. In August, 2017, her business, AKA her downline had been shut down because the products weren't even registered in the UK. They'd been dissolved by way of compulsory strike off because of their issues back in April. And Charlotte essentially went nuclear. Her statement on Facebook was pretty damning, telling the world everything that was wrong with Valentis. She claimed that her upline, Carly Steele, and those above her had persuaded her to buy 16 boxes for stock back in January. Therefore, the leaders of the company that were trying to cover their asses by insisting they never sold the product were liars. Otherwise, why order stock? She added that when she joined, there was no advice, no rules, no guidance. That only came in April when the company had been dissolved. Valentis didn't disclose just how hot the waters were getting though, not at all. Instead, they told Charlotte and other distributors that they were just in the final stages of registration in the UK. And that's why they wanted everyone to be careful. Beth Robinson, the triple diamond executive was also called into question in Charlotte's Facebook post. It read, all Beth Robinson's videos that showed how to boost sales and make profit from selling boxes have been removed from YouTube. Make of this what you will. I have screen prints from their team pages telling reps to keep selling, but only to close family or friends and not on social media to avoid being caught. What sort of company is this? And that's an excellent question, Charlotte. And allow me to answer if I may. It sure looks a lot like a pyramid scheme from where I'm standing, but the UK isn't the only place they've had this problem, even if that seems to be where they're most hated at this point in time. They're actually dangerous worldwide. Now, as we briefly mentioned earlier, Valentis has contained class C controlled drugs called DMAA and phenethylamine. As MedSafe explained, these two controlled drugs are known to have mood effects, stimulant effects, and the former has been banned by many sports authorities and government agencies. Even the FDA considers DMAA an unsafe food additive and claims to be very concerned about it since it narrows blood vessels and arteries as a way to raise blood pressure. This can cause shortness of breath, arrhythmias, a heart attack, seizures, and other dangerous side effects. And notice how I say even the FDA, because the US is just notorious for not lifting a finger to stop harmful supplements from flooding the market. So if we even care about something, that's how you know it's especially terrible. Basically, you could be potentially risking your life drinking Valentis that contains DMAA, but at least you might lose some of that pesky belly fat, right? That's probably a fair trade-off, I guess, maybe. I, I don't see it, but there are people who clearly did. Now, it's worth mentioning that I don't actually see DMAA on their list of ingredients on the Slim Roast Brazilian coffee. I've got no idea if that means they've actually removed it or they're just not listing it, who knows? But call me crazy and I just don't think I'd want to order their coffee anyway if they were willing to put potentially deadly substances in it. Surprisingly, after this warning was released by New Zealand's MedSafe in 2019, it only took the US one year to catch up and issue their own warning through the FDA. The Jordans received this lovely letter in the mail around November 30th, 2020, which told them to stop marketing their product for medical use online. The Valentis website at the time read, most diseases today are categorized as inflammatory diseases, digestive issues, lack of energy, heart disease, asthma, skin disorders, Alzheimer's, unmanageable weight gain, arthritis. Everyone suffers from chronic inflammation to some degree. This combined with the fact that their products were labeled as inflammation managers were basically telling the public that, hey, we can cure most diseases. While it's great that the FDA did something, I won't lie, I'm pretty disappointed by this letter. It just says, hey, stop making false claims. Whereas MedSafe the year prior literally warned New Zealand not to consume the products, to go to the doctors if they had it and felt unwell and to return or dispose of any Valentis Slim Roast they may have purchased. They straight up yeeted Slim Roast out of their country because of the dangers. Whereas the FDA just said, hey, can you just stop making the fake claims? Like, okay, thank you. The FDA even sent another letter at the start of 2021 that might as well have said, hey, thanks for addressing those claims by the way, but don't do it again with a polite finger waggle. 
Valentis itself has basically skirted around these claims, saying that a false positive for amphetamines is the reason for their products being labeled not compliant with the World Anti-Doping Agency. I guess the DMAA just wasn't in there then. And it's kind of weird that they'd even try to argue against this because the other class C drug, the one that I do not like pronouncing, phenetholamine, hopefully I said that right, is actually listed on their ingredient label. Authorities in Denmark called them out on this and issued a warning against them. And from the sounds of it, Valentis didn't actually try to fight it. They basically just said, yeah, we've got that in there. I guess we'll take the ban. But admitting that there's two drugs in their products, like one is fine by them, but two, no, that must be a false positive. So I think it's pretty clear to me and hopefully to you that Valentis just isn't safe. But hey, maybe you want to sell unproven and potentially risky weight loss coffees to your friends anyway. What happens if you do? Well, before we take a look at the what if situation and the potential money that comes along with it, let's take a quick moment to thank today's sponsors. So fall is officially on its way, thank God, one of my favorite seasons only to be followed by my favorite season, which is winter. And as the seasons are getting a little more colder, a little cuddlier, a little more, in my opinion, enjoyable, so are the cooking options. And HelloFresh is absolutely capitalizing on that cozy, delicious, warm food feeling. Because getting back into the fall season can be busy, but weeknights can be made so much easier with foolproof step-by-step recipes ready in around 30 minutes or less. And with HelloFresh's quick and easy recipes, 20 minute meals and low prep, low cleanup options provide an even faster route to putting food on the table. And I recently got a little email from them that they're adding, they have like a little dessert section and they're doing this like spiced carrot cake or something. And when I tell you my heart stopped, I immediately like posted it to my patrons in our little private discord server. And I was like, look at this, I'm gonna have to get it. I will bake it and I'm going to give a full review because I'm so excited. I love carrot cake. So I was just like, excellent. So if you wanna get started and change your cooking experience at home, make sure you go to hellofresh.com slash MLM16 and use code MLM16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. Again, go to hellofresh.com slash MLM16 and use code MLM16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. Today's episode is also sponsored by Honey, the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. Sometimes when it comes to online shopping, it can be stressful because when it's time to check out, there's that little promo code right there and gosh dang it, I don't have anything. And boy, would I love 10, 20 or 30% off of the purchase that I'm about to make so that I can save that money to spend it on something else that I need to take care of. Well, thanks to Honey, searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past because Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. Now, as many of you know, I play a lot of Dungeons and Dragons and what's important for Dungeons and Dragons? That's right, pizza. Did you know that Honey will help you secure a sweet, sweet deal on getting pizza delivered to your place, no matter what you're using the pizza for, whether it's to eat it, use it as an accessory for D&D while you're eating it? Well, Honey's got you covered. It was super easy. I went through the whole process of ordering pizza. Then at the uh, promo code section, I let Honey do its thing and find some codes for me, found me a 20% off coupon and voila, pizza. And 20% savings, of course, too. And Honey doesn't just work on desktop. It works on your iPhone too. Just activate it on Safari, on your phone and save on the go. So if you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting the show. And I'd never recommend something that I don't use. So get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash MLM. Again, that's joinhoney.com slash MLM. Although I want to make it perfectly clear that anecdotal evidence isn't even remotely foolproof, we're going to take a look at what a former Valentis representative told the Talented Ladies Club before backing up her statements. This Jane Doe says she'd actually been working with Nu Skin for a little while, but the sales targets were incredibly high and difficult to reach. All over the place, Jane kept having Valentis pitch to her as a way to earn three to four figures per week, sometimes even five figures with a car bonus. Jane was Valentis's perfect target, not just because she wanted to work from home and be her own boss, but she'd literally already fallen for the MLM business model. She believed in it. And despite it not working for her in the past, Jane seemed to hope that Valentis would be the turning point. Maybe she just wasn't working for the right MLM. She says, I had built a team with new skin, but no one was making money. In Valentis, it seemed like everyone was making money. And I was tempted by all the fry pay posts. Fry pay, I would assume is a combo of Friday and payday, a stupid one, but I digress. Unsurprisingly, Valentis wasn't what she thought. The first five promotions you can earn with the company are based purely on the packages you buy. 
literally, you can buy your own promotions and titles with the Valentis, and it doesn't seem to have anything to do with sales or how well you do your job. And Jane definitely wasn't doing well at selling either. She only sold 13 boxes her first month, about four to five her second, and a single box in her third month, then none in her fourth. Customers told Jane that they weren't actually losing any weight and Jane had to spend $200 each month on boxes just to stay active since she could no longer sell any herself. This does add up when you look at Valentis's compensation plan. There's five different packages you can buy and just buying a starter pack instead of a basic one qualifies you to be a gold IR or independent representative. An advanced pack makes you platinum, a business builder makes you a ruby and a career success makes you an emerald. And I just, this isn't fully related to just Valentis obviously, but like, can they not think of any more creative titles like gold, platinum, diamond, emerald, ruby, sapphire. It seems like every MLM has these weird gemstone and precious metal related titles that don't mean a damn thing. If you're going to put meaningless titles on coffee representatives, at least make them interesting. Like you could have the roast master, Colombian coffee lord or bean boss or something like gold, boring. There's also some screenshots of their income claims online, like another four figures this week, or I've made the same amount of money in the last five weeks as it took me to make a year at my old weekend job. Some even compare their income to other MLMs, stating that they're earning more in one week with this brand new company than I used to earn in a month with Juice Plus. And for the record, $2 is still more than $1. So, you know, they could be correct. While the representative's claims and titles are pretty standard, there's a few things that the sellers do that throw up just a few more red flags than the average MLM. And honestly, I find it strange, like the weird obsession and loyalty that some representatives seem to have with their company. Right now, I'm discussing Valentis, the company as a whole, and not targeting any individual representative because I know it's not necessarily any one person's fault that this MLM has drawn them in. Yet I know without a shadow of a doubt that I'm going to get some comments on this episode from representatives defending their MLM tooth and nail. And frankly, I believe that's because of the cultish grip that they seem to have on people and not just Valentis, but so many MLMs in general. Former representatives are seen as jealous failures within the company. Toxic positivity is pushed down sellers' throats and negativity, AKA realism is viewed as an infection. The reality is that this MLM does have issues. When multiple different governments across the world are warning them and banning them, that should speak volumes. The trouble is that Valentis just isn't listening. But with all of that being said, that's where I'm gonna end today's episode of Multi-Level Mondays. I hope you learned something new here today. And if you did, make sure you're liking, following, and subscribing to stay up to date on all the latest content. And if you're subscribing over on YouTube, make sure you hit that bell notification so you can actually be notified every time a new episode comes out because YouTube doesn't like to notify everybody. So thank you so much for making it to the end of today's episode. I really do hope you enjoyed it or learned something new or both, that would be great. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. 